Hello! Fenton here. This is Factorio. What we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna play Factorio, but I'm gonna hugely over explain it. Because all I see on the subreddit is questions that are obvious to me who has a lot of time in this game. But not obvious because, to be honest, the game doesn't really do a very good job of telling you all of the really small minutiae and stuff. Um, so if you're just about, if you're just starting to play Factorio and you're like really be a bit overwhelmed, or if you've played it before and you want to make sure that you're not missing anything, then this is uh, this is it, and we're gonna just play the game. Um, I've got this cool thing that does this. Check this out. Hello. It has other colours as well. Hello. How cool is that? Um, it can zoom in as well, right? You ready for this? Watch. Hold on to your butts. Whoa, yeah, look at that. Uh, it pauses the... Whoa, God. It pauses the screen. The game keeps running in the background, but the screen keeps going, which is why I uh, don't have um, video on, because otherwise you'll just get a freeze frame of me with a stupid face while I draw all over it. So, all right. Uh, and then for mods, I'm going to play with um, FNEI, which is like a little encyclopedia sort of thing, just so I can show you what items exist and what they're used for and stuff. I'm going to use the rate calculator to show you ratios and stuff, just to prove ratios and how they work and things. We'll get to that in a minute if this is all going above your head. Don't worry about it. And Afraid of the Dark, so that it never gets dark in the game, and uh, it creates for a better streaming scenario. Other than that, we'll start a new game in the free play. Uh, this is the intended way of playing Factorio, just in case you are following along. You definitely want the free play, make sure it says intended way. Oh look, watch, I can do this. Make sure it says... not that one. Make sure it says this intended way of playing Factorio. Yeah, look at that. I'm still getting used to this software, so you'll have to forgive me. But um, I'm going to leave everything normal except I'm going to turn the enemies off because I personally hate them. I don't think they add anything to the game. Um, and especially we're going to be... this is going to be going quite slowly. <laughs> If you, if, if you could believe it, it's going to go quite slowly, because I'm going to be over-explaining basically everything. Uh, you don't have to worry about any of these settings, really. The only other one you could do, maybe... Oh, we'll turn pollution off as well. If we've got no enemies, there's no reason to have the pollution on. Uh, and if the pollution's off, it just improves the game performance slightly at the very high end, at the very large base. But if enemies are off, there's no reason to have pollution on uh, at all, really, I think. As far as I can, as far as I can tell, uh, you could turn cliffs off, but we'll leave cliffs on because it's just interesting. Uh, and then we'll preview the map. I always preview the map because I'm really fussy about where how my map starts. Um, Grey is iron. If you if you've never played before, there's really no reason to preview the map other than you're just curious. I'm just really fussy because I don't want to spend a lot of time walking between the first two. Um, or points, so I just like to give it a quick uh, refresh. And uh, this, I don't like it when the stone, when they're overlapping as well. So I often spend a fair bit of time here, actually, uh, <laughs> just making sure everything is close together but not overlapping. This is okay. I don't like all of this water. Which reminds me, should I add a mod? No, I might add a mod later to. Um, this is fine. This is good. They're all kind of close together. The water's there. There's plenty of space between them for building. And then also there's no cliffs as we go down this way. We'll probably start building this way. Uh, that's this way, fact fans. This way. Cool. Right. Let's go. I've played a lot of this game, as I said before, and uh, 
it's quite finicky in that sort of weird way. Uh, this is the Factoria free play. Your task is to launch a rocket into space. We'll get to that. You'll need to research advanced technologies in order to unlock the rocket silo. Start small, work your way up with automation, and don't forget to protect yourself from the natives. Which you can ignore, because I've turned them off. The ship. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press the pause button on my keyboard, which brings up the grid. Actually, no, I can do you one better than that. I can press F4 to open the debug settings, and I can tick show tile grid. Here we go. This is the grid. Everything you build, absolutely everything you build, will be locked into the grid. Things are of various size here. Actually, let me just quickly turn uh, this one off for now, just so it's not cluttering the screen. Uh, it doesn't tell you what the size is, but there's nothing stopping you from just opening the inventory with E. I'm using mostly default key bindings, I'm pretty sure. The only thing that might be slightly different is my toolbar down here. might have a slightly different layout, but uh, we'll get to that once I start explaining the toolbar. Everything in Factorio is based on the grid. If you see, this is a coal patch. Coal is one of the resources. You can see this square has no coal, whereas this square has some coal. As I move my cursor over it, that has the coal, and I can use the zoom in function here to show you. There we go, 30 coal on that square. I like how when I leave that, it zooms out smoothly and it's not just really jarring. Um, I will leave the grid up for a bit. Obviously, I don't play with the grid on. These are cliffs, they get in the way. These are trees, you can chop them down. This is iron. This is copper, and there is some stone over here. Okay. Where to begin? Let's get rid of this tip. We don't need that. Get rid of all of these tips. You won't need them. You've got me. Okay. In your inventory, you start off. If you press E, you open your inventory. You've got this character thing. You can click and drag and move any of these windows around in the same way that you would in Microsoft Windows. Uh, you've got your character tab here, on the left is your inventory, it's made up of all of these items stack to a certain stacking size. Uh, it is now that I'm going to actually turn the um, show debug info in tooltips, because I believe that has important things like item stack size, it's 50 for the burner mining drill, which is... Uh, just zoom in slightly so you can see item stack size for the stone furnace is 50. Not anything else hugely important there in the debug thing, um, but I like to turn that on just because it gives you a little bit of extra information that you might have. Wood, item stack size 100, and it's fuel value, which we'll get to shortly. There's not really much you can do at the start, um, and it's working out, if you've done the tutorial, there's some basic stuff you can do. Uh, this is our ship that we crashed in. You can demolish it for some parts, but we won't do that. We'll start properly from scratch. Okay. It's always a good idea to start with iron. Um, because you want more burner mining drills and more stone furnaces. And we'll get to why in just a second. And I keep saying we'll get to why in just a second, but... Uh, there is really so much to explain, which is why I feel like this over-explained thing. I should have set a timer going, really. Uh, it's ten... Okay, I will go for another 20 minutes. I don't know how long I've been going for already. I'll aim for about half an hour, 45 minutes per video. Um, yeah, if, if you just get thrown in like this, it's a bit much, isn't it? It's a bit much. You've got all of this stuff here. God knows where to start. Um, I'm here to tell you where to start. <laughs> You want to make copper and iron. Everything in the game needs copper and iron to some extent. Some, the, you know, there's stone here which turns into some things, and there's a bit of uranium up here which we won't need for a very, very long time. Um, but iron and copper is 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 the way to go. So let's start with the burner mining drill, shall we? burn a mining drill 
mines. You can only place it on resources. And when you are about to place it down, it tells you the expected resources. So what it does is it takes the value of each of the individual squares. Uh, as we saw here, amount 234 and so on. And it sums those up into the 2 by 2 square. And it gives you the sum. Expected resources, uh, 1.7 thousand obviously, roughly, give or take. The mining speed is irrelevant at this point in the game. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that, but it's 0 0.25 a second. Um, and I always like to just put it on the edge and just work inwards for a reason that will become obvious the further we progress in the game. So we'll put it here. Uh, this is also a good example of, we'll see it running out. So this, this is a very thin patch here. This only has... Um, can I zoom and then draw? No. Uh, only 21 iron ore on this 2x2 two two patch. Um, but I'll oh know. It's got no fuel. Um, anything that needs fuel and then doesn't have fuel will flash with the no fuel symbol. And you can also again see that here. No fuel. Fuel, if you hover over the fuel slot in the thing, is any of these items. We've got some access to wood and some access to coal. We can see that wood has a fuel value of 2 megajoules. And let's go and get some coal. Uh, let's stop off at the wood. You can right click to mine things. You can manually mine the iron ore. And you can see at the bottom there, there's, my, there's the bar filling up. Let me. Uh, it's going to be here, just in case. I can't leave both of those things going at once unfortunately but this is the bar as soon as that fills up we get an iron ore you really won't need to do this for any more than like two seconds at the start of the game i'm going to go up to nine for a reason that will become obvious in a moment uh so then we can do the same on the trees this tree expected resources there on the right four wood take that tree um and then again, you can do the same on the coal in the same way you can on the iron. You can also see there on the right that the amount is ticking down as we mine. So, there we go. Uh, the wood's fuel value is 2 megajoules and the coal fuel value is 4 megajoules. So it will last, one piece of coal will last twice as long as a piece of wood for burning. Isn't that amazing? Let's put some fuel in, shall we? So as we put the fuel in, ooh, let me do some drawing, shall we, just because it'll be fun. As we put the fuel in, this bar here explains to you the item that you're burning and how long it is taking to burn. And this bar here is the mining process. When it fills out, you get one of this. But where you get one of it where? Well, there we go. Well, when I right click, that takes forever. Um. I've pressed ALT here, and you can see as I press ALT, this yellow arrow here disappears and reappears. You basically want ALT mode on all the time. Um, you just press ALT once at the very beginning of the game, and then that is it. This arrow shows you the grid square that it's going to output, and it's output this piece of iron ore onto the ground. Now this piece of iron ore is slightly different from this iron ore, in fact that it's just an item on the ground. And I can right click to pick that up. Another one is spat out straight away because this was just waiting for space to output it. Now, this would be quite tedious to do, as you can imagine, taking the iron ore like this. Um, I don't know actually how many pieces of wood, how many iron ore you would get out of one of these. It's not an e if it's not a nice round number if you saw this burnt fully and this wasn't quite full, so it's not a nice round number. It's irrelevant, you don't need to know. As far as I can tell, you would never ever need to know that. You either have fuel or you don't. Um, so there's got to be a better way to do this. Of course there is. Let's make a wooden chest, shall we? Now a wooden chest, so on the right hand side of here you've got your crafting, you've got all the tabs here. Logistics, production, intermediate products, combat, but we'll just stay on logistics for now. Let's make a wooden chest. Oh, we don't have enough ingredients. It needs... 
Let's do blue, shall we? Just for fun. Two woods. And it takes 0 0.5 seconds to craft by hand, which, again, we don't really need to worry about that at the moment. This tree is going to give me four wood, so that's great. All right. So if we build a chest, we'll put the chest down. The chest is one by one, so it can go on any of these grid squares. If we put the chest down and click it, we can see that it's got... Uh, what is it? Is it 16? Tells you somewhere. Yeah, storage... 0 out of 16. And it has health, uh, which if we were playing with enemies and stuff would be relevant, but obviously it's not. It's relevant that I can... I do start with a gun, so I could shoot it, but there you go, I shot it just for fun. Uh, this is the health bar. Uh, I ran out of bullets, and it's on one health. That's funny. That's just going to be sat there forever now. <laughs> on one health out of 100. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's put it here anyway. If we put it here on the output square of the miner, now suddenly the miner has all of this space to output into. And I'll pick up my ore and put it into this square. So as each mining operation here completes, instead of just going onto the ground, of which things on the ground, there's just each space has one square, and I'll show you that just by dropping an item, which you can do with Z. Uh, these don't align to the grid squares, which is interesting. They do have a set amount of space that it can take, but it's not... Again, uh, it's totally irrelevant to know that it never ever comes up. Oh no, we've run out of fuel. But we did get... We have gotten 25 iron ore so far. Right. The name of the game in Factorio is, of course, automation. So what we would really like to do is we would like to have a constant source of fuel so that we can just keep making iron ore. So ideally, we would want a burner mining drill making coal for us. So in fact, let's move this. Let's take this over here. And we'll bung this on the coal. And we'll bung the chest here. And we'll put the coal here. Yeah, there we go. Right, so now we're spending coal to make coal. Problem with this is that it requires manual intervention. As the coal runs out, you can see here that the coal, you get more than one coal from the uh, burning the fuel, which is why this is extremely important that you can spend one coal to get, I think it's about eight, six, it was, about, it was about seven. It was about seven. Um, but as I say, this requires manual intervention. The important thing to realise with this, with the arrows, is that anything that has an input like this, so this is an, basically an input slot, so to speak, if you think of it as an input slot, uh, which will become important later as we start talking about inserters and buildings and things like that, um, I could have another one of these, I mean I don't have one, but imagine I had another one and I could put it here doing something else and it would also do whatever mining operation it was doing and put that here. So the important thing to realise here is there's no reason why we can't have two burner mining drills pointing at each other. And the output of one, so we could just take the coal out of here and, and put it in here. Well, these are all just left-click operations, and of course there are quicker ways to do all this, and I'm deliberately taking it very slowly. As I said, this is an over-explained series, so don't get your underwear in a twist about the fact that I'm not doing everything stupidly efficiently from the get-go, because the best way to, uh, I find the best way to learn is to work to, to say why we're doing these things, and which comes back into why I'm starting this whole series is... There are a lot of very good uh, YouTubers playing Factorio, but they're kind of taking all of these things for granted at the moment. The new players are coming in and they're just seeing these YouTubers plop, plop down huge massive designs and not really understanding how or why any of these things work the way that they do. Um, so if we had a second burner mining drill pointing at this first one, like this, we would have basically a feedback loop of coal 
that would last until either this fuel slot here was full or the coal underneath ran out. So let's do that. Where are the burner mining drills? They are here in production and they are just here. We need three iron plates, three iron gear wheels and one stone furnace. Now iron gear wheels are a what we call an intermediate product. They are made from a primary product which is the iron plate. Uh, but you can see down here, I'm going to press G for green, you can see down here the total raw ingredients that that needs. It doesn't break down the iron plates as to iron ore because you can't make iron plates by hand. Can you? Is that true? Yeah, of course it's true. Of course it's true. Um, so the game is basically saying if you had five... Oops, not, that's not the right button. Uh, control Z. If you had five stone and nine iron plates in your inventory, you could make the burner mining drill. So let's do that. Let's make some iron plates, shall we? Now iron plates are crafted from, if we go over to the iron plate, it's just an iron ore and it's made in stone furnace, steel furnace, electric furnace. Obviously we only have st stone furnaces at this point in the game. So let's plop our one stone furnace down, shall we, and see what's going on there. Oh no, it's got no fuel. It works mostly the same way. You can see here it has a fuel slot, but it has an ingredient as well. So whereas this just has a simple output, a progress bar and an output, this has an input, a progress bar, and then an output on top of on top of the fuel. So let's do this, shall we? Let's take the coal out. And again, these are all just left-click operations. I'm not going to go into the shortcuts for now, but I will do my best to do all of the simple left-click operations for you so that you can follow. Take our coal, bung it in there. Take the iron ore, bung it in there. Possible input stone, iron ore, copper ore. Oh, I wonder what stone makes. We'll find that out later. Suddenly, now, our stone furnace is making iron plates. And so then as each progress bar completes, we're getting iron plates come out the other end. Item stack size 100, which I also believe means that that's why the stone furnace will stop when this hits 100, because obviously this is one slot in the same way that the chest has this many slots, and the item stack size of coal is 50, so that's 50 times 16, which is 320. Is that correct? Was that maths? No, of course not. That would be 20 slots. 5, 800, 800. There we go. That's maths. Um, this will just keep going until this is 800, which obviously it won't because it's going to run out of fuel. But still. Oh, I'm pressing E here, by the way. I should have explained that. I'm closing these windows very quickly just by hitting E. E is the same. E opens windows, it closes windows. E is going to be your best friend, basically, throughout this game. We've got our nine iron plates that we needed, so we can take this out. So if we go back to our uh, production tab and look at our burner mining drills, we can see that we're almost there. This one, uh, what was it? Shift control drew an arrow. Oh, it's the wrong way around. This one is white, just because we have it. This one is orange, because we don't have exactly this in our inventory, but we have the ingredients to make it. So iron gear wheels are just iron plates. And this one is red because we don't have it and also we can't make it. We don't have the five stone that we need. Uh, but we can make the iron gear wheels and as I say it's two iron plates make one iron gear wheel. Uh, we could make these directly from here, but there's no reason to if all we're doing is making the burner mining drill. We just have to get the five stone and we can click this and it will do the intermediate steps for us. But we will do this just because two iron plates, half a second craft time. Now, let me see if I can quickly... There we go. So in the very, very bottom left here, and I'm going to do this... I pressed the wrong button. In the very bottom left here, you've got the handcrafting queue. Now, obviously, it's just one iron gear wheel at the moment, so it's not going to show up for very long. I'll make a few more because I will need them. But so it's just that's your handcrafting queue, and that will grow as the game progresses. There is some element of handcrafting involved, especially in the early game. We needed stone. Stone was up here. 
I'm going to turn the grid off for now. I'll turn the grid back on once we start talking about belts and inserters because it's a lot more important. Uh, we'll just hand mine some coal in the same way. Right click. We needed five. So you can see these tooltips as well. Let me get one up for you. That was really just as it was auto saving. It's showing me um, what the operation just did plus one of stone, and my inventory now has three stone. So we need five. So we're waiting until it says five in brackets. Right, so then now when we go over to this, this has a little number one next to it because that is the number that we can make based on everything we have in our inventory. So if we click it, you'll see down in the handcrafting queue in the bottom left, it's going to make the stone furnace first. We could just make the stone furnace ourselves. Where is it? There it is. Out of the five stone, but I will do this just to show you that it's going to take the stone, make the stone furnace, and then make the burner mining drill. The scroll wheel just zooms in and out by the way, and you move around with WASD. This isn't a very good over explained, I didn't even tell you how to move around. You're all just watching this stuck in the same place that you pressed new game on because I forgot to tell you how to move around. Okay, we can get rid of this treasure chest now. I just mine that with right click. Uh, everything inside the treasure chest went into my inventory as well. So I just mined it in the same way I would take a tree down or remove one of these buildings. And I'll just remove everything, in fact, and right click. Everything in the building goes into my inventory, providing I have the space. If I don't, you don't ever lose it. It just uh, either tells you you don't have room or it spills onto the ground. But whatever. Right, so we've got our two burner mining drills now. So now if we take... This is not a very good place to build it because it only has 15. But I'll do it here. This has 709. This one has 1,100. So what I need to do now is just start the process off with some coal. So then as soon as this outputs, it's actually outputting into this one, into this slot here. And this one is outputting it into this, and then this, and so on. So then now we've just got two burner mining drills feeding each other with coal. The stack size of this is 50. This is going to go up faster than it's going to go down. Eventually we'll just have two burner mining drills here with 100 coal in them. 100 coal between them, and we can just go and pick that up, which is arguably less, it's not much less work than outputting it into a chest, but it is objectively less work. So we've got coal sorted, so we should probably start thinking about automating iron plates. Now thankfully we made enough iron to just build, an, and uh, we have a stone furnace in our inventory already, so let's is the one you start the game with. So now we've got another burner mining drill. And we can place this on the iron ore. Put it right on the edge. It's got no fuel, but that's fine. But more importantly is we don't now have a stone furnace to uh, actually make the plates. If we were in a different biome, there might be some stones that we could mine in the same way as trees, but there aren't, so we're just going to have to do this for now, but that's fine. Five stone. Perfect. Make a stone furnace. Right. In the same way that we did this down here, we can do the same, but with the iron ore, we can do this. So the miner outputs directly into here, the output of which will go into the in input slot, the ingredient slot, and the whole thing will be semi-automated. So let's take our 50 coal and put the fuel in there, and let's take our other stack of 50 coal and put the fuel in there. So that said no ingredients, but as these operations finish and it outputs the iron ore, it will go there and then make the plate. Now this smelts faster than this mines, so you'll never see a backlog here until this hits its stack size limit at least. And that has now totally run out because actually the square that we built it on had so little iron that we've now run out. So now it says no mineable resources. It had mineable resources, which is why we were able to put it down, but now it doesn't. So now we just have to move things slightly. Uh, and 
as I say, I want to work from the outside in, but I will not put it on the most pointlessly small space imaginable. I did that just as an exercise. <laughs> Alright, we got iron plates going now. So we can now scale up slightly and make more burner mining drills, except we don't have the stone. And this is the third time I've gone back for the stone now, which is going to be setting off alarm bells. Because I don't want to be going backwards and forwards every time to make stone. So you know what we should probably do? We should probably automate some stone production. Because we need stone furnaces. One, to smelt the plates to begin with. Sorry, one, to smelt the plates. But two, to actually make the burner mining drills in the first place. So for every automation, for every like unit of automation that we want to do here, we actually need ten stone. So let's make another burner mining drill and set this up. Thankfully stone at this current stage of the game is just a raw ingredient that we can use. So we can do this and just have the stone go in here. We can come and pick it up periodically. Five stone is thankfully not that many. Mining speed is 0 0.25 a second so it's going to take five seconds for us to get uh, one stone furnace and then ten seconds obviously for the whole setup. So that's fine. That's ages. How are we doing on coal? They're totally full now. You see the stack size of 50 has been reached. Nothing more can be done. Um, if you... Here's the first keyboard shortcut that I'm going to talk to you about. If you hold control and click a building, you'll just take out what's in the building, in the output slot at the very least. Uh, well, I mean the fuel slot is the output slot for this, so... Uh, and the same goes over here. If I hold control and click this, I will pick up the 28 iron plates that are currently in the stone furnace. 29, 30 now. Thank you. 30 iron plates, 33 total in my inventory. And we'll move over here. And we'll give you a whole bunch of this. Um, so this is going to give us enough stone that we need to start automating burner mining drills and stone furnaces. We've got we got iron plates going. Right, so basically we can just start scaling this up and getting iron. I'm not worried about copper. I don't know if you've noticed. Nothing so far that we have done needs copper. So let's just get our iron ore production started. We'll wait for this to tick up to 10. But this is the limiting factor. Oh, in the same way I can do on the, on the chest. This is the limiting factor. So actually, you know what we'll do? We can make two of these. How can we make two of these? Oh, of course, 10 stone. I was still going on 10 for the burner mining drill and the stone furnace, but we don't need that. If stone is the limiting factor, let's make more stone. We can rearrange these slightly so that, and let me turn the grid back on just for the uh, benefit. You can see here that this arrangement, and if I had the fourth one, it would go there. This arrangement, yes, I know, can't reach, uh, allows us to put one chest right in the middle and have three outputs going here. That's just a little tip there for you, simplicity's sake. There's no reason why you couldn't just have them in a row like this with three chests. Um, but of course, this would be the most efficient way to do it. Uh, now, I've got two stacks of coal, but I've got three things. So what I'm going to do from my inventory is I'm actually going to right-click instead of left-click, and that picks up half a stack. And I'll bung that in like that. And then I can just put the... Actually, I'll put half a stack in there as well, just so that everything's got roughly 25 in it. So you can now see this will be ticking up much faster. So between our stone and our... Uh, turn the grid off for you now. Between our stone there and our iron ore supply over here, our iron plate supply I should say, 41. Still we, we put 50 coal in this and it's 
barely touched it. This has gone a bit slower, uh, gone a bit faster, but that's fine. Control click to take that out, 59. So let's take these 59 iron plates and the amount of stone that we got in the time it took me to explain all of that. 39, wow, six burner mining drills and seven stone furnaces. So if we just go one, two, one, two, one, two. So you see our handcrafting queue down here now is uh, quite large. This one, this is the one I want. Whoa, steady on. Handcrafting queue down there is quite large because of all of the intermediate products that we needed to make. We need to turn the iron ore into gears first, so we need to turn the stone into stone furnaces. We can now start doing stuff like this. And I'm just checking each time before I put it down that the expected resources over here is not too low to the point where it's basically pointless me even doing it. And then the same with our stone furnaces. And we need a lot more coal. So let's go and get the coal. These again are full up. Control click, control click. Alright, this is my favourite part of the early game. And this is going to be the end of the video coming up soon as well, so just stick around. <laughs> Remember earlier when I said you could press Z to drop an item? If in the same way that when this outputs onto a square that can take the item, it just automatically puts it in. The same goes for dropping things. So I can press Z on here to drop one coal in, and you'll see in the same way that the uh, operation to mine says plus one I, uh, iron, this is saying minus one coal on what's left in my inventory. But if you hold Z, it ticks, and if you hold Z and move up and down, it just keeps dropping one at a time into each new thing as you roll the cursor over it. There we go, that's all the coal. And that's roughly evenly distributed. There is a mod, it's called Even Distribution. I haven't turned it on for this because it's kind of an advanced thing that you would need. Um, we're going to try our best to just not need it or make do. Uh, I played for hundreds of hours before I even added mods, so doesn't things like that don't bother me these will tell us when they're out of coal of course so uh, but we've got a lot of iron plates going now we've got iron plates sorted and we've got stone sorted and we have a basic grasp of stuff that's going on um, so yeah that'll do for episode one and I hope I explained enough uh, we haven't gotten to the real magic of belts and inserters and assembly machines and stuff. This is still very early game. This is the kind of thing you would probably bust out in maybe five minutes once you knew what you were doing. But of course, if you don't know what you're doing, then it's all quite confusing. So I hope maybe this has helped somebody out. Um, and if you want to, you know, play along and whatever. Basically, if, if I hope this, I hope you found this helpful. I hope somebody found this helpful. Basically. Um, and I will continue to make more uh, and just play through the game. I don't think I will need to do anything off camera uh, for a whole bunch of episodes. I might start doing stuff off camera later in the game once it just becomes, you know, like tidying small things up. Um, or maybe I'll build something in advance to then explain. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you do. Uh, did find this helpful make sure to let me know with either a like or a comment and if you want to see more of Factorio over explained in the future be sure to subscribe other than that thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye